Hello and welcome to Tiny Code Christmas. This is the second of 12 days of size coding and demo scene effects in fantasy consoles. There is no leaderboard, no requirement to show your work, just to enjoy the festivities. Join the Love Byte Discord, follow us on Twitter and Mastodon, there's a link in the description for all of these. If you're stuck, ask for help on the Tiny Code Christmas channel on the Love Byte Discord server. This video is a companion to the tcc.lovebyte party website, so please check it out for the full picture. There will be a challenge and a size code restriction on that challenge if you want to take it even further. Today we'll be starting with Tick80, so if you're here for the Pico 8, you can skip to that section now. Create a new cart, and let's set up our Tick function. So today we're going to talk about time, and Tick80 has a time function, so let's type help time and get an overview. This function returns the number of milliseconds elapsed since the cartridge began execution. Useful for keeping track of time, animating items, and uh, triggering events. So there is a bit of a problem in this version of Tick80, where uh, version one, where the time is supposed to return the number of milliseconds, but on platforms other than Windows, it seems to return a time that's a lot slower. Um, if you're following along on Windows, this might be a lot faster, and you'll just have to divide the time by a bit more, and I'll, I'll show you how to do that here. So let's take a look at this time value first of all. I am going to clear the screen, I'm going to assign t equal to time, so that we have the time, and I'm going to print out the time t at location x0, y0, and color 12. So we haven't used that print function before, if you want to learn more about it you can use the help command, but all we're going to do is just use it to print out t to the screen. So let's run this code and take a look. So you can see that's supposed to be the number of milliseconds. It's a lot slower on my machine, unfortunately, and we're just going to work with it anyway, and then we'll show a way to work around it with timing based on the number of frames that have elapsed instead of the time that has elapsed. This is the time, and normally what we do is we'll divide it by a thousand to get the number of seconds, um, and a lot of the times so when we're messing around with an effect, we'll just divide it by different values to get the timing right. So. Unless this is only a problem if we actually want to count the actual number of seconds for something. But since we're just doing some effects and we just want to see how they look, it's nice to just uh, change that value and get the time and to, to kind of dial in the time. So if you're on Windows, you might have to add an extra zero to make it look the way that it looks here. And that's just an unfortunate bug that we have to deal with at the moment. This T value for time here, I'm going to animate a single pixel with that now. And this pixel, I'm going to put it at uh, X, 10, and I'm going to put it at Y, 10 as well, just so it's clear of the text and it's not in the corner, it's easier to see. And I'm going to set the color to white. Now, I want to animate this, so that means that one of the, either one or both of the X and Y coordinates has to change over time. So how do we change something over time? In the most basic instance, we can add the time value to it. So let's run this and take a look. So we can see every time our t value increments, so every time it gets bigger than one, that is added on. And I can go back and change the divisor here to make it a bit, a bit faster. and you can see that we've successfully animated that one pixel. To change to a frame-based method of keeping time, we are going to de declare our variable t equal to zero up the top of our program, outside of our function, and then every time we come around, we're just gonna add one. So instead of asking for the time through that time function, instead what we're going to do is just keep a variable make it equal to zero, and every time tick is called, add one to it. So that means that if tick is running at its um, perfect frame rate, that means that we're going to be adding 60 onto that every second. So it'll be added one 60 times a second. So let's run this now and see what happens. So over the course of the second, we can see our time adding up, and we can see our animation is in progress. So let's get set up with our snow effect. So I'm going to load yesterday's code. I'm just going to run it so that you can see it. That is my Christmas tree from day one. Um, 
and you can see that I cleared the screen to the blue sky. I draw a rectangle for the tree trunk. I use a for loop to draw five triangles and I adjust the Y position and the essentially the width of the triangle as well. I draw a rectangle for the grass and then I draw a circle with a radius of one for the star on the top of the tree. And you can see that I have two, five, two uh, characters, including the commons. So I still probably had a good bit of space to add some stuff, some extra stuff. But what I want to do now is I want to add some snow. So I'm just going to delete the comments so that we have a rough idea of how many characters we have left. And 191. Down here, after my tree has been drawn, I am going to try and draw some snow. Now, we've already drawn one pixel of snow, which is fine. But what we might want to do is to draw a number of pixels. So what we can do here is we can use a for loop. And I can reuse that I value. And I can say equal 1 to 100. Do. And now I have 1 to 100. Um, counting up with I. I'm going to go pixel. And we need X and Y values. So I'm going to start with the X value, maybe. And I'll just say I. And I'll make the y value equal to 10 for now just so that we can see it and I'm going to give them the white color so let's run this and see what happens so we've effectively got a line of pixels that have been drawn from 1 to 100 and you can see that's not exactly what we're looking for here if we maybe multiply this by 20 okay that's starting to look a little bit better a little bit more like snow. So how can we make that wrap around again? So that's going, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 on screen. What I'm going to do is I am going to divide that um, and get the remainder after division by using the mod of 240. So we can see over here in the left hand side, just as a quick example, there's no dot here now. But if I put back in that mod 240, which means that if the number goes over 240, it will essentially wrap around to start at um, zero. So if it's 241, it'll go back to one. That fills that out a bit. And then for the Y value, I'm going to do something, something similar. And Have something like that. So that is using the for loop um, to lay out some pixels on the screen. There's a hundred of them and I can again if I want to add this in and make the pixels wrap around the top so you can see they are all taking note of this portion up at the top and if I mod it by 136 and run it. That means that when the pixels are drawn and it's counted up to 100 multiplied by 20 or whatever um, and it goes to place a pixel off the screen over 136 which is the height of the screen it'll wrap around and it'll go back to the to the zero coordinates for that. That's one way of adding something like snow and look it is not random exactly in the way that snow would be and when we're size coding, sometimes we have to take these trade-offs. But if I run it, that looks like snow. Have a mess around with it and see if you can change some of these values, some of these parameters. Maybe if I change this to something that isn't as uniform, like maybe 23, we see we start to get something that's a bit different. If I change it to maybe um, 45, um, some random value 57, we can see that it starts to maybe look a bit less uniform. What you have to do is use your knowledge of time to add in that animation. Get that snow falling. So don't forget to check out the website and drop by on social media to let us know how you're getting on. So today we are going to talk about time and we are going to set up our basic draw function 
and we are going to clear the screen and I'm going to create a variable t and I'm going to set that equal to time. So pico8 has a time function and I'm just going to go help time and it will give us a helpful description of what that function is doing. So this returns the number of seconds since the program started running taken from the moment the current frame started. So um, let's use the print function to print this out to the screen. So I'll print out t and I'll print it at uh, 0, 0, so the top left hand corner of the screen and I'm going to give it color 7 which is white. So let's run this and take a look. So we can see now that this progresses its fractional seconds, so you get the 4 seconds, 5 seconds, but you also get the portion of the second that has happened so far. And there is also um, a shorter version of time function that you can use called t, but that is going to give us a conflict with our variable name. So if you are using the shorter version of t, you either would use it directly, like this, or you would use a different variable name instead. So what I'm going to do with time now, I'm going to change back to um, t equals to, to time, and I'm going to print that out again, and I'm just going to mess around with the p set function. And while we're writing this code, just make sure again that you've clicked down to character count. So I've used 57 characters out of the 65,000, but again, our limits are much lower than that that we're working towards. So I'm going to set a pixel to be here. And I'm now going to animate that by adding T to the Y value. And you see now that every time that gets added, the y value will be so it's 16 at the moment, 17, so it's 10 plus the, the time. And that is a very basic attempt at some falling snow in one pixel. We can speed this up a bit, just going to multiply it by the time by 30, so that it um, moves it by more pixels. Um, and again, you can adjust the multiplier on this to see what makes sense. And I like that. So that's the basics of time in Pico 8, and this is how we do animation. And we're going to take a look now at our scene from yesterday, and we're going to add some snow to it. My attempt at the challenge from yesterday in Pico 8, and if I run it, you'll see that it's a very basic snowman. He has two eyes, and he is on a snowy ground with a nice blue sky in the background. So. Let's just take a run through this code. Um, I'm clearing the screen color one, which is that nice dark blue. I am use, drawing the snowman using three circles that are filled. And again, you can see here that I'm using the um, Y coordinate. I'm adding I to it so that it changes every time. And that should draw the three circles. And I'm adding I also in the radius. So when I run it, it gives the, um, the increasing size of the circles as I go down. I've used two pixels for the eyes. Um, there's no real benefit to using a for loop for for two pixels. And then I have just used a rect for the ground. So what we want to do now is we want to add our snow. So to add the snow, we are going to try and keep it under 250. And you have the job of adding the timing to that snow then to see how it works. So I am going to use a for loop to create a um, hundred drops of snow. So I am going to use a single pixel to draw the snow, but it's going to be in a for loop and it's going to draw it 100 times. So I'll use i, 10 and 7. So it's going to draw i as the x coordinate, it's use 10 as the y coordinate. And let's just take a look at how this looks. So it's after drawing a solid line which is not much use to us for snow. I'm going to start spacing it out a bit. I'm going to multiply it by 20 so that there's a bit more space between them. And you can see, obviously, at some point, these are going to disappear off the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mod that number by 128, which means that if the number goes above 128, it gets wrapped around to 0 and starts again from the left-hand side of the screen. So let's take a look at this now. Excellent. We have much more 
drops of snow. We might want to do something for the y value as well. So I'll just put i in there for now and run it and see what happens. Hmm, pretty good. So we have i 1 to 100. We have a screen size of 128 by 128. This is roughly 100 um, pixels in the sky. And we have our snow. So we might also just want to mod this so that if any of them go above the 128, um, uh, you know, if we if we decide that we want to multiply this by two so that it goes to 200 instead or something, um, we might just want to put that in so that it covers that. So that is your snow, and we are still we are 225 characters, and your job is to animate that snow. Don't forget to check out the Tiny Code website, tcc.lovebyte.party, and drop by on social media and let us know how you're getting on.